bunch of the boys were hoovering it up in the Malamute saloon. The kid that handled the music box was playing a ragtime tune. And back at the bar in a solo game sat dangerous Dan McGrew. And watching his luck was his light of love, the lady that was known as Lou. When out of the night that was fifty below and into the din and the glare, there stumbled a miner fresh from the cricks, dog dirty and loaded for a bear. He looked like a man with his foot in the grave, with scarcely the strength of a louse, yet he tilted a poke of dust on the bar and called for drinks for the house. There was no one could place the stranger's face, and we searched ourselves for a clue as we drank his health, and the last to drink was dangerous Dan McGrew. There are men somehow that just grip your eyes and hold them hard like a spell, and such was he, and he looked to me like a man who had lived in hell, with a face most hair and that bleary stare of a dog whose day is done as he watered the green stuff in his glass, and the drops fell one by one. His eyes went rubbering round in the room, and he seemed in a kind of a daze. Till last that old clown fell in the way of his wandering gaze. When the ragtime kid was having a drink, there was no one else on the stool. And the stranger stumbled across the room and flopped down there like a fool. In a buckskin shirt that was glazed with dirt, he sat and I saw him sway. And he clutched those keys with his talon hand. My God, but that man could play. Was you ever out in the grate alone when the moon was awful clear? When the icy mountains hemmed you in with a silence that you could most hear? With only the howl of a timber wolf and you camped there in the cold, a half-dead thing in a stark dead world, clean mad for the muck called gold. While high overhead, green, yellow, and red, the north lights swept in bars, and you've a hunch what the music meant, hunger and night and the stars. Not a hunger of the belly kind that's banished with bacon and beans, but the gnawing hunger of lonely men for a home and all that it means. For a fireside far from the cares that are, four walls and a roof above, but oh so crammed full of cozy joy and crowned with a woman's love. A woman dearer than all the world and true as heaven is true. And God, how ghastly she looks to a roof, the lady that's known as Lou. And all of a sudden, the music changed so soft that you scarce could hear. You felt that your life had been looted clean of all that it held most dear. That someone had stolen the woman you loved, that her love was a devil's lie. With your guts all gone, and the best for you was to crawl away and die. It was the crowning cry of a heart's despair, and it thrilled you through and through. I guess I'll make it a spread, Miss Sue. The dangerous Dan McGrew. Well, the music almost died away, and then it burst like a pent up flood. It seemed to say, Repay, repay. My eyes went blind with blood. A thought rose up of an ancient wrong, and it stung like a frozen lash. And the lust awoke to kill, to kill, and the music stopped with a crash. Well, the stranger turned, and his eyes they burned in the most peculiar way. His lips went in to a kind of a grin. He spoke and I heard him say, Boys, said he, you don't know me. I none of you care a damn. But I've this to state, and my worth are straight, and I'll bet my poke they're true. But one of you here is a hound from hell, and that one is Dan McGrew. Well, I ducked my head and the lights went out and two guns blazed in the dark. Well, the woman screamed and the lights went up. Two men lay stiff and stark. Pitched on his head and pumped full of lead lay dangerous Dan McGrew. Well, the man
ran from the crooks, they clutched in the arms of the lady that was known as Lou. Those are the simple facts of the case, and I guess I had ought to know. They say the stranger was crazed with hoosh, and I'm not denying that's so. I'm not so wise as a lawyer guy, but strictly between us two, the woman that kissed him and pinched his poke was the lady that was known as Lou. And the girls were together, and I would recite that poem, and it hadn't been out long. And three or four times, I and him, and another fellow that was a stepson to a rancher we, I was working for up in the sleeping shop country. We was feeding cattle there. And um, we sat up all night. We went up to a room. One of them had a room in a, in one of the, in a rooming house in town. We went up there and shot dice all night across the bed. He recited poems and we drank whiskey. 